To you and your baby, we dedicate this film. For nearly nine months, you will have been providing a snug home for him and supplying food for his rapidly growing body. Nine months is not long in a lifetime, but if you're like the average mother-to-be, when it's nearly over, you will be ready. In fact, you will be more than ready. You will be waiting and waiting. Everybody gets a little impatient for the baby toward the end of pregnancy. That is, everybody but the baby himself. He's in no hurry at all. But for you and your husband, those last weeks do seem to drag a little. And chances are your husband will be looking forward to the day with just about as much anticipation as you will. But however much the time seems to drag, there isn't any doubt that the day will soon arrive when you will be going to the hospital. So in preparation, you will pack a bag to take along. Toothbrush, makeup, a bed jacket perhaps, and so on. Useful things, and things to make you pretty. And then one day in the middle of things, probably when you least expect it, labor begins. Rhythmically, surely, labor begins. You feel the pains, the labor contractions of the uterus, either low in the abdomen or low in the back, under the flat bone midway between the hips. The rhythm is slow at first. The contractions come every half hour or so and last for about 20 seconds. But soon the contractions lengthen, the intervals shorten, and you keep a record. 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And now it's time to call the doctor. He will be most interested in what you have to tell him, for he has, after all, been following your progress for nine months. He will probably ask you whether you have any pinkish discharge, whether much or little, or a flow of water, indicating that the bag of water surrounding your baby has broken. And he will surely ask you how frequently the contractions are coming along. Any one of these three, contractions 10 minutes or so apart, pinkish discharge, leakage or sudden rush of water, or any combination of them, will indicate to the doctor that you and the baby are ready to go to the hospital. He will tell them that you are on your way. And so you are. It's a relief to know that your baby is finally on his way. You don't need to hurry. There will be plenty of time. Of course, your husband may get a little excited, but don't let that bother you. Take your time. Following your doctor's call, the hospital staff will have made preparations for your arrival. By the time you and your husband arrive, Everything will be ready, and they will be expecting you. At the hospital admission desk, you may be asked a few questions, but only a few, and then you will be taken to the maternity ward to prepare for the delivery of your baby. Your husband will stay behind to answer more questions, fill out the necessary forms, and take care of the financial end of things. When you reach your room, you will get undressed, put on a hospital gown, and roll into bed. Immediately, a lot of people will become very much interested in you and your baby. Your arrival will start into action an experienced team dedicated to helping you bring your baby into the world. They will be quiet and efficient. And they'll do everything they can to make you comfortable to help ensure success in this very important moment for you and your family. Soon your doctor arrives to take charge of things. He will be following your progress closely now, and first he will examine you to see how far along in labor you are and to check on the baby's position. Now let's move inside to see what has been happening. Here is a side view of the abdominal cavity in the upper part of the leg. Notice the distended abdomen with the navel in its normally popped out state. The bladder and rectum have been squeezed aside by the uterus or womb containing the baby 
and by the vagina through which he will be born. Now, labor, as it is called, is the work your body does in easing the baby out. Two sets of muscles are primarily involved in labor. The long muscles, called longitudinals, extending from top to bottom of the uterus, and the circular muscles, called sphincter muscles, that surround the neck of the uterus and have held the uterus closed, or nearly so, during pregnancy. The long muscles do most of the work during labor. As they contract, they move the baby down and out the openings surrounded by the sphincter muscles. These sphincter muscles are intended to reverse their usual action now. They must relax completely and allow the opening to stretch so the baby can move out into the vagina easily. Now, if you let yourself become overly worried and overly tense, the sphincter muscles may not relax as they should. They may contract, tightening around the opening, opposing the action of the long muscles as they contract to push the baby out. This may increase the discomfort of each contraction. However, most labors are normal and natural. And if you're confident and relaxed, the sphincter muscles are also relaxed and gradually open up to let the baby through. That's why it's really important for you to know what's involved in labor and the birth of your baby, so you can be reasonably relaxed and take it as easy as you can. After the doctor has learned all he needs to know concerning you and the baby, a nurse will shave off your pubic hair and give you an enema to help clear the way for your baby's birth. And so you rest, a patient patient, so far as possible. You knit, perhaps, and the first stage of labor continues, taking its own sweet time. And when a contraction comes along, you relax, letting the uterus have its way. Labor is divided into three stages. The first and longest starts when the contractions begin, when the mouth of the uterus begins to open. Gradually, the sphincter muscles relax. At the same time, the long muscles contract, gently pushing the baby on his way. The first stage ends when the opening is large enough to let the baby slip through. During the first stage, helpful doses of medicine may be given to you if you need them. They will relieve some of the discomfort that your labor will be causing you and give you a peaceful state of mind. Try to relax each time your uterus contracts. Breathe slowly, deeply, easily. Deep, slow, abdominal breathing not only helps to relax you, it also helps to get the baby into line for an easy delivery. If your abdomen is held down, the baby's head pushes against the side of the uterus. He must make a detour to get out the opening. By breathing with your abdomen, you make it possible for the uterus to push forward at the top, to stand up so the baby can be pushed directly down through the birth canal. So far as you can, try to relax with each contraction. Try not to squeeze. This will help the sphincter muscles relax and allow the uterus to open. When the mouth of the uterus has opened completely, the second stage of labor begins, and soon you will be taken to the delivery room. The delivery room is much like the doctor's examination room. Its main piece of furniture is the delivery table where your baby will be born. There is a table with sterile drapes to cover your abdomen, legs, and buttocks and with sterile gowns, towels, and rubber gloves for the doctors and nurses. Everything is absolutely sterile to protect you and the baby. There will be sterile solutions to wash you with just before the baby arrives. And there will be a cord tie set to tie off the umbilical cord, 
after which the baby has been getting its food in the uterus. There will also be various sorts of anesthetics. For example, a continuous caudal anesthetic set, a saddle block anesthetic set, and there will be gas available. Some mothers, perhaps you, may want a certain kind of anesthetic. Feel free to ask for it, but by all means leave the decision in your doctor's hands. Finally, there will be a bassinet ready to receive your baby. And so you reach the delivery room, ready to deliver your baby. Contractions are coming along about every three minutes, but try not to be overly impatient. Try to keep your mind free of worry and hurry. You can rely on your doctor and his helpers, you know. They've brought a lot of babies into the world. So you will know what to expect. Your doctor will tell you what he is going to do, and more important, what he wants you to do to help your baby along. Now, what is happening inside your body? Well, the baby's head is moving through the mouth of the uterus. With each contraction, he will move down the birth canal a little farther. And at the same time, he will rotate to face your back rather than facing your side as he did before. In the second stage of labor, you will be told to take several deep breaths while the uterus gradually increases in the strength of its contractions. At the peak of the contractions, you will take another breath and hold it. In other words, you will push at the peak of contraction. With each push, some describe it as leaning on it, the baby moves along a little farther. Take your time. There's no reason to hurry. This is hard work, of course, and you need to rest between each contraction. You won't be alone in your work. Your doctor will be working too. He will be keeping you informed of progress and will be ready to receive the baby as he comes out through the vaginal opening. Remember in the second stage of labor, you push with each contraction. In the middle of things with everything moving along well, you may suddenly wonder how the baby can possibly get through that small opening. Don't worry, you'll stretch enough. For nine months, your body has been preparing for this, adjusting your muscles to allow for the birth. Your baby's head, his largest part, will come through first. Your doctor will be there, ready to hold the baby's head and to manipulate him gently so his shoulders, arms, body, and legs slide out easily. So, in a very little while, you have become two. And he will be a fine, healthy baby, announcing his arrival with a good, loud cry. The doctor will tie the umbilical cord and cut it. Since the cord has no nerves, neither you nor the baby will feel it. And now you can hold your baby. What a wonderful thing to give life to a new human being. And while you're getting acquainted with your baby, the third stage of labor begins. The placenta that has been feeding him begins to come loose. And another contraction or two discards it from your body in from five to 20 minutes. It is called the afterbirth. Your baby is born, the job is done. And when your doctor says, congratulations, you did a fine job, he really means it. Back in your room, you begin to realize how much you are going to enjoy your baby. He's all yours, every inch, every ounce of him. For you and your husband and the baby, it is the beginning of a new era 
an era brim full of surprises and happiness. Doctor, dancer, lawyer, president. What will he be? Have you chosen a name for him? Don't forget to telephone the relatives. Are the announcements ready? Don't forget to get cigars and candy for the office. Ah, well, father will take care of that. Now for a well-earned rest.